Okay, let's talk about homeschool pre-algebra. And if you're watching this video, I am I'm going to assume that you are a homeschooler, and that is fantastic. I have the uh, greatest respect for homeschoolers and homeschooling. But uh, what we're going to be talking about specifically in this video is what homeschooling parents need to know about homeschooling pre-algebra. And uh, let me go ahead and show you the questions I'm going to be answering in this video. So the first is, what is pre-algebra? Now, most of you probably have a pretty good sense of what uh, uh, pre-algebra is. It's kind of self-explanatory, but I'm going to give you some additional information on why this course is so uh, critical for your child to be successful in. Now, the second thing we're going to be talking about is what is um, kind of grade and age appropriate for students to take uh, pre-algebra. So what grade should students take pre-algebra? We're going to answer that question. And then the third thing is, what's the most important factors for student success in mathematics and pre-algebra? So these are the three questions I want to be um, answering in this video. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and for many, many years, I have uh, worked with homeschoolers. So I offer a... Um, series of courses, middle school and high school courses for homeschooling that uh, many, many homeschoolers have used throughout the years. So my courses contain, or they start from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and pre-calculus. So again, I only focus on middle and high school mathematics, but this is one of the most critical um, phases of your child's education. So if you are looking for a homeschool pre-algebra course, definitely want to check out my uh, courses. I have a lot of uh, free previews for you to check out and uh, additional information, placement tests, etc. So I'm going to leave a link to my homeschool program in the description of this video. Uh, if you want to check that out after this video, I think that would be a good idea. You always want to evaluate all your options. Don't commit to any uh, curriculum. That's my best advice to you until you kind of really seen everything and then you make a good decision. So hopefully you'll take a look at my uh, courses here in a moment. But let's get back to these questions because this is very important for you to know whether you use my program or any other program. So let's get uh, to our first question. And that is, what is pre-algebra? Okay, so what is pre-algebra? Well, it sounds like it's the course before you take algebra, right? I mean, it's like pre-algebra. So some parents might think that a pre-algebra course is still uh, kind of in the realm of middle school math. So let's kind of look at it this way. Here we have uh, elementary level mathematics, and then we have middle school math, and then we have like high school math right here. So typically when you think of high school mathematics, you think of algebra, geometry, um, algebra two, you know, pre-calculus, statistics and stuff. So that is correct. So where do we put pre-algebra? Is it like over here or is it over here? Well, pre-algebra uh, is typically taken at the middle school level, okay? But it is, in fact, algebra, all right? So all these courses I'm talking about here I've taught for many, many years. So instead of thinking about pre-algebra as a, like a middle school math level course, where it's like, well, you take this course before you take algebra. And in fact, you do. Really, I want you to think of this course as an introduction to algebra. It's basically an algebra course, all right? Um, so your uh, child has hopefully uh, successfully completed middle school level math. So that would be like maybe at the sixth or seventh grade, arithmetic, fractions, uh, positive, negative numbers. But their first real introduction into serious algebra is going to be pre-algebra. Okay. So I think a lot of times uh, parents and students think, oh, no, uh, before I get to algebra, like a, um, an, a full you know, high school level algebra one course, I'm going to have kind of like this real easy class pre-algebra before I get to that. Well, it's not the case. Okay. So let me show you a little bit about how the algebra sequence uh, works. So you have pre-algebra, you have algebra one, and then you have algebra two. So this is what you're going to be expecting um, from kind of like your middle school to high school transition. So you're going to learn, uh, your child is going to learn pre-algebra. And then in Algebra 1, they're basically going to cover everything they learn in pre-algebra again. So half the course in Algebra 1 is almost like a review of pre-algebra. So 
You're going to get pre-algebra, and then you're going to relearn all of this stuff in Algebra 1, and you're going to learn new stuff in Algebra 1. And then when you get to Algebra 2, guess what that's going to be? Well, half of that course is a review of Algebra 1, and then you're going to learn new stuff. So the Algebra sequence is going to be a lot of relearning uh, these algebra concepts, and uh, pre-algebra is really this baseline course of learning serious algebra because here at the sixth grade level, even seventh grade level, more middle school level mathematics, you're, uh, a lot of your student, or your children, or students, whatever the case might be, has already been doing basic, uh, some basic uh, algebra type of problems. So there's kind of a, light, a real light introduction into it. But pre-algebra is really going to set the tone on how well. Uh, your child's going to be set up a course for Algebra 1 because these courses are connected. So you want to take the, uh, this course uh, truly serious. It's a very, very critical course. It really does uh, bridge the gap between middle school and high school. It's that bridge. Uh, and when you get in high school, let's just talk about a couple other quick things. Um, so in middle school, your grade point average, okay, when it comes to college is not uh, really considered, okay? But when high school, when you look at or you calculate your GPA for uh, college applications, now your grades do count and there is a, uh, an impact there. So you want to get pre-algebra right. So when your uh, child, if they do take algebra one at the freshman level, ninth grade high school level, that they're kind of really set up for success. Okay, so how well your child's going to do in Algebra 1 is going to be uh, fairly reflective of how well they've done in pre-algebra. And the same thing goes for Algebra 2. Um, how well students do in Algebra 2 is going to be pretty related to how well students do in Algebra 1. So think of this whole kind of continuum, uh, pre-algebra, Algebra 1, and Algebra 2 is one gigantic algebra course that's kind of broken up uh, over three years. So Anyways, pre-algebra is a super critical course um, and one that you really want to try to get right for your child. All right, so the second thing is, uh, what uh, grade should students take pre-algebra? All right, well, let's kind of go back to my little chart here. And typically, uh, most part, you don't want to be taking pre-algebra in high school. You want to finish up uh, middle school mathematics as pre-algebra. So let me kind of just draw this again a little bit clearer. So here we have elementary level. So we're talking up to the fifth grade. And then in the middle school, you have sixth grade, seventh grade, and then eighth grade. So the uh, best place to take pre-algebra typically for most students is going to be at the eighth grade level. Of course, there's always exceptions. If you take it at the eighth grade level, that sets up students at the ninth grade level to take algebra one. And let's just take a look at this sequence here. Tenth grade level, I recommend geometry. 11th grade, you want to do Algebra 2. And then at the 12th grade, if you want to continue on with mathematic, you can, mathematics, you can do pre-calculus or statistics. Okay, This is a very, very good uh, college prep track. So if you're not sure if your child is going to college, if that is in, um, may or may be an option, you still want to get them on the right track by having them uh, take Algebra 1 at the ninth grade level. This is generally what most students do. So if you're gonna take Algebra 1 as a freshman in high school, that means you have to take your pre-algebra here at the eighth grade. Now, sometimes students do take um, pre-algebra at the seventh grade, uh, sometimes even at sixth grade, but this is definitely uh, more uh, accelerated. Now, if you're not quite sure and you wanna give yourself some time, you could start your child let's say I'm pre-algebra in seventh grade and let them do it for like two years, okay? If you want to be flexible in that manner as well. The whole idea though is to really, uh, for the most part, most students should be taking Algebra 1 at the ninth grade level, okay? So this is uh, what I would recommend and this is what most students are doing at most uh, schools out there. So eighth grade level, in terms of what uh, grade, uh, that is obviously eighth grade and then age, you know, most students are going to be eighth grade, you know, 12, 13 uh, years old, 12 to 14 years old. So, but again, everything uh, is case by case. And if you have a, a child that's very accelerated, then you can think about moving them up. But you always want to be thinking in terms of a long term track and where you think they are going uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, their future goals, okay? If they're definitely going to college and you want to be thinking about getting up to at least the pre-calculus level as a senior 
in high school. So you're going to um, always have to reverse engineer um, your, your kind of plans on where you're going to be taking these courses at. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our last question. And that is, what's the most in, uh, important factors for student success in mathematics? Well, you know, I might sound a little biased here, but the first thing, the most important factor uh, when you're learning anything is going to be the teacher, okay? So we have teachers for a reason, okay? You don't go to uh, the bookstore or go on the Amazon and just buy yourself a pre-algebra book or a calculus book, and then you just read the book, okay? This is not how we learn, right? Uh, I mean, it, it would be nice if we can learn, and a lot of people can learn this way, but the book in and of itself is just information, Okay, you need someone to translate that information, and that person is called a teacher. So who the teacher is, okay, is really going to be the person to translate that information in the book, bring it to life, okay, talk about things that are not in the book, okay? Now, uh, when you have a textbook or a program, there's so much information that's uh, not contained in the book that uh, only the teacher knows through experience, i.e., like common mistakes uh, that students make, you know, habits that students need to develop. There's some things in textbooks that are not as important um, as others at that particular grade level. So the first thing I would suggest to you uh, when you're looking at a pre-algebra course is who is the teacher? Do they do they have, um, you know, what's their background? Like for me, I have a degree in mathematics. I'm not a, you know, just a, a math teaching credential. I actually have a full degree in mathematics, theoretical mathematics. And I also have a master's degree. But beyond that, I have a lot of years of experience. So you want a well-qualified teacher teaching your child. That's the number one most important factor when it comes to uh, student success. Does the teacher motivate them? Does it, you know, do they have clear instruction? Is there enough instruction? Okay. And that brings me to uh, my second uh, point here is that uh, the, there is enough instruction. Okay. The, so the instruction is, um, you know, a complete. All right. So think about the quality of instruction. Are the lessons going to be, and we're talking about like an online course, are the lessons going to be quick, like little tutorials, or are they going to be comprehensive, okay, the full lessons on topics? Uh, the third thing that your uh, students are going to need to be successful, or anyone in, in terms of mathematics, is a lot of examples, okay? So, um, in other words, a lot of demonstrator prompts. So, you have your teacher, you have great instruction, but then now you have to do your practice prompts. Now, how many practice problems are covered with a video solution? Is there only one or two examples? And then you have to figure out the rest of the 15, 20 examples on your own. Well, you're going to want a program that uh, shows your child how to do a lot of different variety of problems step by step. So your child really needs full immersion and they need uh, a teacher that they don't mind listening to, okay, that they kind of like and understand. So these are kind of, you know, it's kind of a... Um, big, uh, you know, task you have as a homeschooling parent to find a program with all these qualities. I like to believe I have uh, all these qualities in my courses, but take a look at what's out there. Okay. Do your research. The worst thing you can do is do what, like what maybe some of your friends are might be doing, or like uh, maybe your homeschool group recommends, hey, do this program because uh, my child was successful. Now, remember, your child is different than uh, other children, okay? You have to find out what's right for them and what's right for you, okay? But when it comes to being successful in mathematics, really the most important uh, factor is gonna be that teacher because they're gonna know, they're gonna know how to um, you know, deliver great instruction and they're gonna go over a ton of problems, okay? So make sure you have this right uh, when you're evaluating your uh, programs, there are uh, good curriculum uh, curriculums out there for you to consider. The other thing, too, that I would strongly suggest you as a homeschooler do is um, try uh, before you buy. OK, this is kind of like our motto. Try before you buy. That doesn't mean you have to, uh, you know, have a complete full trial of something, but make sure you have a, a some decent sense of what this program is going to be like. You, tr you know, look at it yourself and then have your child take a look at the instruction and see if they like the program and try to maybe uh, jointly come together on, you know, a decision. Okay. But just don't um, purchase a curriculum 
blindly without, you know, testing it and thinking about it and doing your due diligence. But um, hopefully, okay, this information that I gave you here will help you just kind of uh, narrow your focus or sharpen, um, you know, what you need to be looking for to successfully homeschool pre-algebra. I can tell you right now, um, you definitely can be successful in homeschooling uh, all these levels of mathematics, but you're just going to have to do your part and every uh, child is going to be different, okay? You may have one child that's successful with one curriculum, and then you may uh, have another child that's doing another curriculum like that's better, and they could still both have excellent outcomes. So, you know, be flexible in your thinking, look around, shop around, and hopefully you'll, uh, you know, use this information uh, to make an excellent choice for your child, okay? And uh, hopefully, even, uh, you know, uh, most importantly, is that you have a really good sense of all your options, okay? There are a lot of options out there. And again, I'm going to leave a link to my homeschool math courses in the description of this video. But uh, if you feel like this video helps you out, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, this uh, video here is about homeschooling, but I generally, uh, most of my videos are on mathematics. So uh, I have a ton of math videos, um, not only in my free previews of my uh, homeschool courses, but I have over a thousand plus math videos on my YouTube channel. So you can really get a good sense of how I teach there. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your homeschooling adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.